fitness center. Free breast reduction. Free glasses every year. The nutritionist. No lifetime limit. And no copay. And the taxpayer gets to pay for all of it. Oh. Maybe you've heard the radio ads calling out TriMet, which spends as much as $1,900 per employee per month just for health insurance benefits. That's enough to win the Golden Fleece Award for wasting taxpayers' money. But you'll probably be floored when you see the millions more it's spending every year on people who don't even work there. Over the last month, K2 investigated TriMet's union's benefits package. We learned the same kind of deal that drove GM into bankruptcy is happening right here, even as TriMet faces a $31 million budget deficit. K2's Anita Kase looks into this sweetheart deal, taking your money for a ride. Driving a streetcar, max train, or bus seems pretty good when you hear this. How are your benefits? Our benefits are good. Very good. Have a good day. Drivers like her pay nothing for health insurance. Turns out TriMet is the most generous transit agency in the country, picking up the entire tab for union employees, their families, and all retirees. I'll tell you what, this is an awful good uh, thing. Maybe I'll move out here and drive one of these. <laughs> Get benefits for the rest of my life, right? I mean, I wish my employer would do that. <laughs> Why not? The cost of fringe benefits is cannibalizing the general fund. So this cannot continue. John Charles is the president of the think tank Cascade Policy Institute and says TriMet's union benefits are destroying the agency's financial viability. You have a growing number of retirees who are drawing life out of the current organization. TriMet says it paid out $108.1 million in fringe benefits last year. But an outside audit that accounts for long-term liability shows TriMet is actually responsible for more in fringe benefits than wages. That audit says between 2001 and 2008, benefits rose from 61% of wages to 118%. A total of $151.8 million. An easy way to look at that, for every dollar paid, TriMet is responsible for $1.18 in benefits. When the cost of benefits exceeds the cost of payroll, that's ludicrous. Particularly when more than half of TriMet's revenues come not from fares, but taxes imposed on workers in Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas counties. Every time they need more money, they go to the state legislature and they get an increase in the payroll tax rate, which is the cash cow that subsidizes TriMet. So looking at the way the benefit structure is right now for TriMet, is this sustainable? I don't think there's any question that it's not sustainable. Cynthia Chilton is on the Citizens Advisory Committee tasked with evaluating TriMet's budget, which shows retiree medical costs increasing 18% each year. Granted, that number is high due to rising medical premiums and new rules that require more detailed reporting, but it's also because of baby boomers. TriMet's retirement age has dropped to 58, and 40% of employees plan to take advantage of that within the next 10 years. Remember those benefits for life? In 2001, TriMet paid out $3.2 million for 515 union retirees and dependents. Eight years later, it's 905 people and nearly $10 million. That's almost $11,000 per person, again, who doesn't work there. That's not doable. You can't run a transit agency or most business enterprises with that kind of a burden. The logical person to question about these benefits would be someone from the union. We had an interview arranged with the vice president of the Amalgamated Transit Union last week. He canceled, so we came by the office hoping to meet him again. We shook hands and agreed on a 245 interview. If you change your mind and want to do the interview, call me right away. Okay, thanks. Instead, I was referred to this statement from the union president saying, quote, it would be inappropriate to bargain in the press at this time. The administrative employees have taken salary freezes, we've had layoffs, uh, we've cut budgets, um, had furloughs. Um, we pay more for our coverages and our benefits. And TriMet spokesperson Mary Fetch says with the union contract about to expire during a more complex economy, the other two-thirds of employees should expect to make sacrifices as well. Some of our benefits are out of alignment. Unfortunately for employees, the name of the game today with benefits is always a question of how much. 
uh, are we going to have to give up this year? You can either renegotiate your compensation and have an actual job, or you can cling to some utopian version of benefits for a company that's bankrupt. The doors are closing. Anita Kasey, K2 News. And John Charles says all of this should come as no surprise. In 1994, then TriMet board president Lauren Weiss resigned in outrage over the union deal and sent a scathing letter to the editor calling it the greatest coup in the history of public employment in our city.